Okay. Right. Now right. I see the numbers moving. Good gravy. How do I okay, look? this is the Yarn Closet. It's our first June podcast. Don't be a smart aleck. Podcast. We tried to Zoom and record our Zoom today. It okay. didn't work. So if somebody knows the platform that we could each do our own house and record it and then post it as a podcast, tell us. Oh, that we, the two of us, have a meeting. Yes, and record it. Did it. it. Um, the Yarn Closet at Yahoo.com. Or you can go on the Yarn Closet website and do a message through there. I am Yarn Closet AZ on Instagram and Ravelry. Um, you are what on Ravelry? Knitting, uh, knitting kitty. No, you're not. You're well, Moggy kitty. Ma well, how do I remember Because this? you did it. I'm She's Moggy. M-A-W-G-E. M-A-W-G-E-E. G-E-E, kitty. Moggy um, is what her little girl has called me from the time she was starting to say grandma, and it came out Moggy. And it's always... Then we found out, watching some British show... That Moggy is a term for cats in Britain, mm -hmm. like like mutt cats, where they don't know the exact breed. Feral cats. No, not feral cats. No, my mutt cats, where they don't know the exact breed. Well, I don't know the difference between that. Let's. Go feral with... is like a ferocious animal that lives in the wild. People call their cats when they when it's obvious that it's not a purebred. A mutt cat. A, a Moggy. That means mutt. I don't like that. Oh, my God. You're not totally in this picture. I'm better in the picture today than you are. Well, that's because we're, we're, we're getting all closey close. So We've got to stay back further. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. See, now people can see us. Every now and then, we actually have a day that we're getting along. <laughs> hey, I like not your often. new... Not often. I like your new microphone. Yeah, because I broke cool. the other double clip-on thing the minute we finished the last podcast. That lasted all of one show. God, thank God it was only like $8 on yeah. Amazon. Did you get this on Amazon? I did. It was like $10. But there's a mute thank, button. But thank God for... So if you're going to swear, touch the button. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. Um, As though she thinks I swear all <laughs> the time. No, you're not the one that swears. Other people in the family swear. You don't swear. So, uh, the lady did not contact us last month for the Mother's Day prize, so we are going to show that again today, and we are going to randomly pull another name, which we did right before here. So there's this, a little pink plastic reusable bag. It would be good for um, hearing your snacks in the car. Sure. Or how about a sock project? A one skein sock project. Mm. See? One skein sock project. Oh, oh cute. Cute. it fits. Remember, we're on a knitting podcast. Oh, not talking about We're not on an eating podcast. Okay, we all have to ha be good at something. I'm very good at eating. Yeah. Um, and beef, so anyway, it's right just now a I'm trying bag. to beef up for winter. <laughs> it's just a cheese bag. But anyway, you also get a Growly Bear Soap Company. Um, lip balm because it's summertime and it's unscented, so that's lovely. You it also, doesn't have icky stuff in it either. No, I think, yeah, it's all natural. We love and it's not that. wax. Like some stuff you put on, we won't name it, it feels like wax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, this is it's nice. Good. The card for the Yarn Closet podcast, look with your heart first. We have a bunch of these of different styles and varieties, and so you're going to get this one. Oh, hey, remember you gave me those cards? Where did I ever put them? I don't know. You're oh. so podcast-oriented. Um, here's a lovely bath bomb. 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 It's a bath bomb. B-O-M-B. Bomb. Yeah, bath bomb. That. And a little heart container, reusable, with some Braille stitch markers. Or you could put your breath mints in that when you go out. And a um, hat tube. This month you get a hat tube. So it is a 50 gram skein of Felici, the stripes. And then 
a um, hundred gram, almost a hundred gram of the gray. And there's gray on both ends, so you can Kitchener this together if you just want to make yourself a nice big infinity. Oh, I think that would be adorable. If you're not into that, fine. Don't be into that. You could also <laughs> make a two color hat. Yes. Because you could have the stripes on the inside or the outside, you could make a two color hat. Um, or you can just use the, the yarn for whatever the heck you want. Watch this, watch no, this. Just be careful that you don't unravel it. I'm not unraveling anything. Look at this. Look from uh, here down. You know what, this is, this the gray color is two sleeves on me. You could have two sleeves Yes. already, and then just put some other color. Yes, most do. sleeves have decreases though, because people don't want the really big, they don't want a big gapping sleeve here. If it's big enough to go around here, it's gonna be way too big down here, get it? But for short sleeves, you can definitely do that. So the way to work with a tube, whether it's a sock tube or a hat tube, if you want to work with the actual tube, is you can pull the yarn on one end to unravel it just like a sock blank, or you weave your needles in and below the end, and then you unravel a few and you can use that yarn to do whatever you want. You could also make this into leg warmers if you did ribbing. Be creative, people, enjoy the yarn. What else is in there? What's in the box? Um. What's behind door number two? Door number two. I like these better than the things that you got. Yeah. Um, the yarn heart mug. If you go to the Teespring account for the yarn closet, there's a variety of different mugs and bags and whatever. Yeah. Um, this is one of my favorites. Connor loves his t-shirt, and it's got a decent quality. Um, and I do try to alter those prices so they're not as high as most people have. Look, it, if you get the one that says the yarn closet, it's... It's, it's in big. red. It's in red, but it's not big. No. Just want you to know. Mm -hmm. So this will go to... lady's name here uh, where did it go no 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 Lisa hope Lisa hop there's two P's and an E at the end so Lisa give us an email um, go into the contact box on the website for the yarn closet and if you send us your address you will get the lovely June prize So are you itching to chat about something? Yes. Okay, then go for it. Okay. So at the thrift store the other day, I was going through the bin with the yarns. I love, look at all the colors in this. Laura used this same thing and she made It's Lion something. Brand. Yes. Right here. I saved the tag like you told me. Landscapes yarn in what colorway? I don't know. But Desert Spring. Oh, yeah. Look at the colors. Look at all the colors. People have probably seen this one before. Oh, God, I love this. Okay. Because it's a mass-produced yarn. Yeah. So, how much was it? A buck. And I got 25% off, so 75, per 75 cents yeah. Yeah, for this. And so I thought, yeah, I don't know what I can do with one skein. Because I don't know how you tell, you know, yet. Well, Mom, so, you've got to look up the patterns. I keep telling you this. I sent you a bunch of one skein patterns. Well, I know, but none that looked like they were easy enough for me to do. There were a number of them that were just garter stitch. All right, I'll, I'll look. So I just went ahead and got the one. 75 cents, I thought, yeah. Was there there's... more than one? No, that was, okay. that's all there was. Anyway, I love the colors in it. Look at this. Look. See this? Nice. Is that the same on the back and the front? Well, it would be, wouldn't it? Because it's exactly, the, it's just knit, 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 knit. It's called garter stitch. You knit both sides, the right side and the wrong side. And you put on 22 casts, 
left arms and then you do 44 this way rows rows then you do something else but see I haven't read that far because I just thought if I can get to 44 <laughs> I'm doing good then I'll go back read the rest you know I don't like to waste time on this stuff so what I don't like about it I think I'm doing very nice work do you think so, Laura? Yes, I do. It's very nice, very consistent. But you think it's too dense? I think it's too tight, too dense. Because what I want is just a scarf that I can kind of swoosh around me. And you know, it's not real cold here. Why don't you make a one skein shawl? Like a triangular, thin one skein shawl. Like one of the many patterns I sent you. Can you hear a cat? Yeah, I can. What's she She's mad because nobody is in turning water on in the faucet in the guest bathroom. This is the most spoiled cat that we got. We got great cats. Well, oh, good for but. you because our dogs are so obnoxious now when it comes to treats because Grandma has dogs that one too many times. It's obnoxious. Okay, I'll tell you the truth. Okay. Don't tell Laura this, all right? Sometimes they would go away, and I'd go over and I'd stay with the dogs. Not Ed, because Ed says, I am not getting up with dogs at 2 o'clock in the morning to let them out. So he's not real into dogs. I love them. So then I would go over there, and I'd sleep on the bed, and I'd have all three dogs with me sleeping on the bed. Well, every time that they would go out, to get them to come back in, I would just shake the treat bag like that. Oh, look at, if I do that, it just shakes my arm. Oh my God, look at, I look like my grandmother. Oh God, I'm old. So I would shake the treat bag at the door and I'd say, treats, treats, treats. And they come around. You could just say, come in. So I would, don't be listening. So I would just say, treats, treats, treats. And I would, I would give them, you know, a bunch, a couple each. And, you know, it's not like they're fat dogs or anything. For God's sake, you know, give the dog something good. It's a treat. So they started to realize how many treats I was handing out because they would get back and the treats would be just like way down. So, oh my God, that makes me think of one thing. Remember, um, okay, when I was married to Connor's dad, we had two little dogs, and we let his mom watch them, and we gave her, we were going to be gone for three weeks. We're taking a long motorcycle trip from Minnesota to Niagara Falls and back. On a motorcycle? Yeah. Um, you know, because men think that's totally bonding to spend 10, 12 hours a day on a motorcycle, so you're holding on to them. There's a, no conversation, nothing. And then you got to... You got to um, camp out, too. Oh, yeah, because he didn't want to stay in hotels. So then we had to pitch a tent every night, sleep bonding. on the ground, bonding. and have dehydrated meals that you put hot water in. I like those meals, and we did do a lot of motorcycling, and I liked it, but I preferred it when we would motorcycle somewhere to do a nice state park and be able to have the energy to go on walks and see stuff. So it wasn't all bad. Niagara Falls was neat. We saw, um, is it Shenandoah Park? National Park I've never something? been there. I don't know. Anyway, it was pretty cool. But we left her enough food. Like, we would always get X amount of food for the month and put it in this big bin, and we just took the whole thing. We just filled it. Because we figured, you know, three weeks, she'll probably feed them a little bit more than we do in a month. She ran out of food after three days. We all got to be good at something. And some of us like things about eating. Okay, so I thought, you know, she's always saying, Oh my God, Mom, you gave up so many treats. Look, I'm just about on the streets. So one time we were staying there, and I said to Ed, I always bring my own suitcase so they won't know the difference. So I went out and I bought a couple bags of exactly what you have. So I could just give them a whole bunch. Because then if they were arguing about something in the house, I'd say, treats, treats, here. And I'd just carry they treats. They don't around. argue. They 
they bristle or whatever they do. Anyway, so I would give them treats constantly. That's why they love me. I know. So, um, so I don't do you like see how crinkly it is. Crinkly it is. Yeah. So what you got to do is, as you're ripping it back, so it doesn't tangle because you get so annoyed with that. Oh, I do. Is you have to start to wrap it because mm -hmm. that will also take something to crinkle out of it. Yeah. Okay. So here, yesterday, I said, "Hey Ed, I watched this lady." Now you do know that if you use a different size needle. Okay, are you actually following a pattern? Yes. Does the pattern say size four worsted weight yarn? No. And does the pattern, patterns usually say that. And then the pattern would also say X number of gauge, needle size to get gauge, or recommended needle size. Mom, you got to follow the pattern. Let's see if you can tell when I give you the old. Because what's going to happen is when you switch to a different needle, if you cast it. on the same number of stitches, you're actually going to have a different measurement. I'll just be a little wider. I don't know. Are you ever going to finish something? Yeah. So yesterday, I watched this neat thing about this lady. And then I went to Walmart, and then I went to Hobby Lobby and whatever. And they go to all these places, and they get the best bargains. I love this. I love to watch these. Okay, so this lady's saying, and then Hobby Lobby, and I got like 107 skeins of stuff, and it was, I think it was Grammy. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to Hobby Lobby. So I said to Ed yesterday, I need to go over to Hobby Lobby. I need to check out their yarn. Laura and I might have to go to Hobby Lobby one of these days, you know, so I better pre-check it out. So I go over there, and he's got this cart cart mm -hmm. you know and i'm thinking i'm gonna get maybe one skein or two skeins so he gets a but whole if you don't skein. know what to make with one skein why do you keep buying one skein um it would be the same reason why women who are quilters go in and they buy a couple of yards of fabric and if there's not an odd amount you know like three left on the we just say oh just give us the whole thing and because you never know when you're going to make something. Yeah, I know. I get it. Yeah. And you're stuck at home. And it's snowing outside. And you have to start reading your labels so that you know if you get something that's acrylic. Because you know acrylic will stay in the environment forever. Okay? You know that, right? Yeah. And if How about you, bamboo? Bamboo is, will not. Wool will not. But you also have to look at the washing. Because if you're going to make something for a gift for somebody, you're going to want to know... I'm not gifting anything else I make. I'm tired of that because I've made so many things and gifted them. And then I look around and I think, holy cow, I've spent years and years making stuff and I have hardly any of it myself anymore to look at and say, hey, I think that. I remember when I made that. Yeah. I'm keeping it all for myself now. Okay. So you're getting nothing. Fine. She can make her own. <laughs> so... He's pushing this big hank and cart like this, uh, and he's going up and down the aisles with me, you know, as we're looking all the yarn, and I haven't picked out anything. And finally, I said, okay, I want to go around now one more time, because first I look at everything, then I go back and make a decision. And, well, went through the three aisles, and, and he said, really nicely but this is a husband thing so are we ever going to get to a point where we just stop buying yarn and we just actually do something with the yarn like make something and I thought you've been around that damned Laura oh I hit the mute button <laughs> too long and I said yes I know what I want to get I want something. This is what I'm going to tell you. Look at this. Okay. This is, is this cute? Real lightweight. Very lightweight. Very lightweight, but it's quilted. And in living in Tucson, we don't need snow pants when we're going no, out. No, no. <laughs> no. But even in the summertime, you need a little jacket because people have the air conditioner so ridiculous. Yeah, and mm -hmm. or you come out and living in the desert area, it can be a hundred, 
and you go in to see a play and you come out and it's 96 and you think oh, oh it's chilly why is that laura i have no idea oh for god's sake she's only lived here 15 years or something it's because the desert does not hold moisture so as soon as the sun goes down it can be the same temperature but in the the earth or something but we feel cold okay okay so look at this this is what i got two skeins of is this just neat and the colors all go together nicely yes okay i'll yes there is some purple in there it is. and gray purple and green and gray. it's i love this yarn um herb garden where'd you see that oh my god it's right there oh. Yeah. See it where it says the yeah, name? I, I don't read as well as you do. Um, it's acrylic, so you can put it in the washer and dryer. It says the recommended mm. needles, the five millimeter. It is a number four. It's considered worsted weight. And thanks to, I think she's called, I don't know, Crochet Granny or something. Anyway, but look, at isn't this pretty? But... From listening to her, and she said, and then I buy something that's usually 600 yards, and I'm thinking, oh, that yard business, that yard business again. You talk about, and this was so much in yards, and I, I was thinking, what do you need yards for? Just buy this, you know. It's on here, for God's sake. It says Yes, the yards. I've told you for weeks, read the labels, because you're going to read a pattern, and you can't just go buy yarn for the pattern. If the pattern says it needs bulky yarn or fingering weight yarn, and it's also going to say the needle size and the yardage. So you need to know that you have enough yarn. You know, would you start a quilt if you only had three pieces of fabric? Oh, sure. We do sometimes. We start a quilt and we just think, oh, I'm going to put these three, I don't know how, and then we just cut, know, and then we figure it out after. It's not the same as this. This is more technical. You actually have to read something, and you can't just mush it. Yeah, you know, like we do. But isn't this cute? And I look, I look nice in purple, and I look nice in the teals, turquoises. That's what I wanted to talk about. Oh my God. <laughs> Lovely. I'm getting on was it nerves. Lisa Hope? I'm, was I'm it Lisa getting, Hope was our it winner? Was, it, with two P's and an E. Yes. So please get a hold of us with your address. I'm getting um, on her nerves today. You are. That's okay. It's just because somebody else got on my nerves first. Okay. Um, so I finally finished this sock, woven the ends and everything. I'm not good at weaving in the ends. Let me see. It's a sock. And I forgot to bring my sock blockers. And it's got some alpaca in it. It's quite lovely. I That's like this. That's the bit of the halo, the fuzz. Mm, yeah, I like this. Okay. So it's just a crank tube, and then I did a little bit of ribbing up here. I think about oh, 12 rows. Oh, I like rows. this. Uh -huh. What's that called? It's called an afterthought heel. Oh, it's well, cute. Whatever. And so then I am doing the other one, and here's the interesting part. So remember how I said when you've got a tube, you weave in your needles. Most of the time I will do two needles or my magic loop. I tried the nine inch a while back. Didn't like it, didn't like it. But recently in a little lot of needles I got on eBay, there was a nine inch that was in the right, I think I'm using 2.25. I wove it in there and oh my God, it is so much faster. So much faster. So I've started the ribbing um, and I just love it. It just goes so much faster. It's so much easier to do it. And then I will go ahead and put in the heel. Good God, that cat is obnoxious. Okay. And the funny thing is I made these quite a bit longer here um, than I normally do. So I'm going to see what I feel about that length. And yes, I was supposed to have these done two months ago. I'm not keeping up with my pair of socks a month business. Because even yeah, right now, I'm I'm numb. Do you feel this? 
Sort of. You feel this? I pinch you really oh, hard. Oh, you dare pinch me. She used to pinch me growing up so bad it was obnoxious. I did not. Yes, you did. did it you? was awful. I did. Yes, you did. So, um, the crochet in May really had me going. So I'm going to continue to crochet a bit throughout the summer. Oh, that's it's a little bit easier. And this turned out to be quite an easy pattern, and I have no idea what it's called. I totally forgot. Did you not read it? I did you read have it. To read the pattern, and then you I have read to the read pattern. It. I didn't read the name. I couldn't find the name. Ooh, maybe it's on my phone. Hey, did you want to show them your lighted crochet hooks? Is this a no? This is not a lighted one. No, yeah. you, I think I gave you the yeah, lighted the crochet lighted ones. hooks. This is um, from the middle pattern. I believe it's on Yarn Inspirations or the Crochet Crowd. Um, I do like a lot of their stuff. And what I found was very interesting is it's actually a two row repeat. So you have to do a row of like, like a setup row to then do the fans. But it works very similar to a granny square. I'm concerned that it's a little bit ruffly but I just inherited some of this yarn, so I'm gonna just do it. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get a couple things done this summer to stock up a little bit. Um, but the other problem there is what? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Because I couldn't really do as much as I wanted to do, I spent a lot of time looking at other things with yarn. And I'll show you in a minute. Okay. So here's a little heart. And don't read that. My daughter has this guy online, Scotty's Scotty's Animals. She made him a picture and wrote the names of her guinea pigs. And he just moved, so one of the things I just whipped out, because I had one skein of um, a cake, is a granny square triangle shawl. Because he wears actual, like, men's scarves. Oh, yeah. Um, and he moved into the desert desert, so it gets cold there at night. Very cold, from what I hear. Yeah. So, and it's manly colors. Yes. I think he would like it. And if you don't like it, give it to someone. I don't care. Oh, and look it. Is it the same as... No, what? it's not at all. But it's close No, to... it's not at all. It's oh, not it's... the same kind of yarn. It okay, doesn't this have is pink another... in it. It this doesn't is, have... This is another problem that we have between us, is that she sees color better than I do. Yeah. I'm losing my color. Sometimes. Yes. Yeah. But no, they're not the same. Um... So then what I did was, in my research, you'll see a link on the webpage to Electric Eel e-spinners. I tried spinning a long time ago. I couldn't do the pedal and everything else. I couldn't do it. What are you doing with this? I'm going to show you. You're going to get excited. All right. Another thing. So I ordered an, uh, an e-spinner, but it's not coming until August. Um, so then I was looking, and my mom used to do... Needlepoint? Needlepoint. Needlepoint. And there embroidery. Is, and embroidery and kind of cross stitch. I couldn't do any of that stuff. Okay. So what I got was... What count is that? I, it's the Ada cloth. I had Monk's cloth. I don't know. You have to know the count You don't it. actually in this. You do. You do. <laughs> okay, go. So anyway, this have you ever heard of punch needle? This is punch needle. Okay, so you drop so, something. All right, she's drawing some. So I'm barely paper. drawing in here, I can't even see it. Yeah. But anyway, you can do a lot of different, um, oh, and then this broke, way to go. Way to go. I do you have a piece of, um, oh, maybe. Do you have a piece of tape? Yeah. Maybe I do it this way. Okay. 
this is what's left of tiny it. little piece. You do it off. Okay, so I'm taking this one that I thought was too dense. I'm doing it on a different needle that is um, larger. And she already told me the, the size and everything, and I forgot. So I don't know. Just guess. Larger. You're now on a five millimeter. You were on a four millimeter. Eight. So today my husband's down at um, jury duty. I would kill to have jury duty. This is, is this a, it says eight on the end. That's the number of the needle, not the millimeters. So I've always said, I want to have jury duty, but I want to be on one of those ones that, you know, they last for a long time and they, you get to be in your own motel room and you can read and you can, I could just sit and, and do this. Because that think, sounds like a mom vacation to you. Doesn't it? No. Doesn't it? I know. I know. Yeah, but, but yeah. How do you do your laundry? Do you, How do I do my laundry? No, I, no, the people who are in there for like they use a the month. laundry service. Or they have the family members bring more laundry into them. Can you see your family members doing nope, like that? Not usually. Oh, does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they punch take needle. You out to eat. Okay. I've seen it done with little tiny. You thread your needle. Now, I don't know if this is quite tight enough because everyone says that it needs to be very tight and that one of the things that happens with these um, Now, how is it hoops, staying in the back? Are it, you holding on to it? No. The reason that punch needle works is... It's the tension of the fabric and the yarn. It's all just loops. You don't even have to weave in ends. This is something you could teach Prue to do. Yes, but the needles are a little bit sharp. It makes mm -hmm. me worry. But I ordered another set that has something that's plastic. And so, oh my God, people look. I kind of did it. And then some people like- What is it on the back? It's oh, the it's loops. Cute. Some people like the loop sides. Some people like the actual stitch side. I am, oops, and see, I pulled too hard, and then yeah. I pulled those out. Yeah. Um, this is the first time I've ever done this. So I had a um, cousin that we went to the wedding of when I was married to Connor's dad, and she was young. And what were they? They were something different, religiously speaking. Do you remember what they were? I don't know. It was something like Amish, but not quite. More Men Mennonite or something? No, not quite Mennonite, but something Mormon? similar. Oh, no, knows? Mormon is not the same. I have Mormon relatives now. You had know. Mormon relatives too, you know. I don't know who it is, so keep going. Um, apostolic Lutheran. That's what they were. Okay, mm -hmm. so she did punch needle, and... You could do whole rugs. Yes, that it originally started out as a rug thing, mm -hmm. and then in like uh, Russia, it became a way to adorn clothing. So you would know like what family groups you were in and kind of stuff. And then oops, that didn't work. Well, Ed is still down at jury duty, and so he must have gotten a case to be on. You think he did? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I don't think this is quite tight enough. So he says, calls last night, and or goes online, and he says, "Oh my God! Last time I had this, they canceled it. You know, when I was down there, and I was there for like two hours. Yeah, it's not tight enough, so it keeps pulling out. But yeah. you can do all different kinds of embroidery stitches. You can use yarn. You can use thread. Let me tighten up your this. It's not gonna. It's not gonna tighten this up. This is not tight enough. When you can feel your fingers, it's supposed to be like a, a yeah. drum. But yep. But honestly, I think it's. Everybody talks about how you'll try a couple of these and then you just won't ever use them again. 
and you've got to get some kind of big thing. Yeah. It's just another thing <laughs> to do, so. So anyway, that worked really well. But then I got this needle, and it has two holes. And it says that one of them is so that you could have a long loop versus a short loop. But I thought that just had to do with how much you pulled out of the fabric. Uh, it's the other side. If I remember right. Oh, yeah. Holy cow! I had all kinds of those needles. They came in something that I got. Huh. Yeah, they're threading needles for this thing. Yes. Yeah. Maybe I gave them away. Probably. So, so anyway, we're gonna, I'm going to start to try to do that. Okay, she got a cat this week. Oh. Well, then... We have this discussion already. Well, then just stop the whole thing and we start We're over. I'm not starting over. We're already okay. half an hour into this thing. Well, then stop over. Yeah, we're half an hour into this thing. Mm. All right, so we got a cat this week. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, lovely cat, and it lives in my son's bedroom. And it doesn't care about the hamster in this three-story glass plastic deal. Honest to God, it doesn't care. But the, it's in the most secure cage ever, so we don't have to worry. Yeah. And he spends a lot of time in his room. And now my daughter is in her, there with him, and they both just lay around and talk, eventually argue, and play with the cat. His room stinks to high heaven. He is an 11 year old boy. He has a hamster and a cat. And don't criticize me because I am telling you the animals are safe. And you know what? Um, her son has a few issues that make him um, not as socially outgoing as some kids. And he relates to animals, doesn't he? Oh my God, you should see well, him with our cat. He here. relates to the cats. He's better with the cats yeah. than the other animals because he relates to the animals kind of the way his dad does, which is that you can put it away and ignore it whenever you want to, mm -hmm. as long as you're feeding and watering it, which he still has issues with. But he has actually scooped cat poop a couple times. And... Um, he was at our house with our cat, and, and I said, oh, here, you want to feed it? And I opened up this cat food thing. For oh, the, my God, he won't stuff. do that. Oh. He says, oh, oh I'm going to throw up. I can't stand it. I can't stand the smell. I mean, you got to really go slow with him, with things. But our cat adores him. Ed said he would give our cat to Connor in a heartbeat, yes. not to anybody else, if we ever had to get rid of it. Right. He would give it to Connor because Connor loves the cat and the cat loves Connor. Well, and the thing is, like I said, he can push away the hamster when he wants to, but he pulls the hamster out a couple times a day when I'll take the cat into my room or Prue's room and- um, And he plays with that. And have it in a different secured room. Because our poodles could care less about it, but we have a 90 pound boxer mix and... Um, He'll get used to it. Yeah, but right now the cat looks at that big, huge dog and was like, no. Yeah. Um, but the cutest thing is that Connor's bed is across from where his head of his bed is, is right across from the wall where his closet is. And there's a shelf up in that closet and there's a plastic bin that I don't know what is stored in there. Clothes that are too big for him that are waiting for him to grow into. And so she found the bin and that's where she takes naps. Because it's a, like a little bed for her. And mm -hmm. he can lay there because they leave the door open. He can lay on his bed and be playing or doing whatever and be watching the cat. And the cat can just do nothing. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. But the cat will at times come up to the kids and rub against them yeah. and do that kind of thing, which to them is far more interactive than the dogs usually are. Yeah. Um, and this cat is much younger than yours. It's about two. Yeah, I was 15. Um, I think that works better with the kids. Mm -hmm. 
Ours is uh, an old people's cat. Yeah. Good cat for mm, like a person who's old and lives alone. So it slept on his bed last night and stayed. Oh. I had to sleep with him for two nights because it would, it would walk on him. And so I had to move the cat off of him because that just annoyed him. And his biological dad was like, cats can scratch your eyes out. So, um, oh yeah, so here is the cat with our little poodle. They've slept together. They could care less. I think the little poodle just likes having a friend. Mm -hmm. um, and Sadie, the um, big poodle, isn't that a pretty cat? Mm -hmm. Sadie, the big poodle that she has, um, guide dog poodle. That, that dog is so mellow that you could have a water buffalo walk through the house Sadie would look up and wouldn't bother. Yeah. Well, who took those pictures? Is the, oh, no, that was me. I don't know. You kids are always at, at phones. And oh, cameras. my gosh. I know. They're always taking pictures, and it's ridiculous. So that's them the other morning. Honestly... Had my husband let us get a cat a year ago, we would have four less animals. Yeah. But a year ago, none of us knew because we just got ours in um, February. Yeah. Yeah. January, February, something like that. We just got ours and the kids took to it. It took one day for the cat to be here. Again, I think it was probably with old people mm -hmm. because. It just walked around, and then it would just, you know, be real cautious. And then up on our laps, it loves to just, if you sit down, it lays on you. Um, it goes in the dining room and sits mm -hmm. on a padded chair in the dining room that is underneath the, the table. Again, I think because cats like those tuck-away places. Yeah. And uh, the cat does spend some time under Connor's bed where he stores a lot of toys because my kids both have trundle beds with no trundle underneath so that they've got extra storage. Um, but yeah, it was it was just fabulous. He was he was pretty thrilled. Both your kids are. So Prue stayed overnight um, Sunday night and she was fine in the afternoon and she was fine in the evening. And she was fine when she got up at freaking 6 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my gosh. Lucky you. I know. Because they get up at 4 o'clock in the morning in my house. Jeez. And so, anyway, so she gets up and she was fine here. We're sitting at the table. And it's about 9 o'clock. And we're eating about her seventh meal of the day. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. That child is so thin, but she can eat. And so she made Grandpa a sandwich. And then it, she practiced all of her cutting with her butter knife. Yeah. She cut all the crusts off, and she cut it into shapes, mm -hmm. and then piled it up so it was like a pile-up sandwich, you know, and club sandwich or something. And um, that's not working very well. And so that. we sat at the table, and we're all eating. And I said, "Oh, look, isn't this nice?" And she says, <sighs> "Like." You know, roll the eyes. Right. How do the little girls do that when they're just turning four? Rolling the eyes. And she says, well, it better be a video because I'm not going to watch more pictures. I like a video. And I said, well, okay. Let me find a video of something with cat, an animal with cat. I said, oh, look. Here's a nice one of um, Sadie and the cats in this. And she was watching it, and all of a sudden she puts everything down and said, I have to go home. I want to go home to my own house. I have to go see my cat. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you, you have never seen Ed, who is Ed slow. It's deliberate in his movements. And you have never seen that man pack that kid up so fast. Where's your Where's your pillow? Where's your this? Where's this? Get your shoes on. Hurry up here. I'll do the one foot. And she was in that car in about 30 seconds. Yep. And he looked at me and he I said... Did lose a stitch? Yeah, you did. I can see that from here. Yeah. And he says, that cat, that cat. He says, no, there's a reason for those kids to want to go home. 
Or that, yeah, they've only yeah. had 53 animals or whatever it is. Yeah, but the cat has really been the one that um, they all wanted. And, you know, everybody says, oh, but don't get a cat because it'll stink and stuff. And, yeah, the food stinks if you feed them the wet food. Um, just feed them and, take, and pick it up after yeah. and wash the dish. That's what we do. Yeah, and then the uh, kitty litter. Well, if you only have one cat... And if you actually scoop the litter like once or twice a day, it's mm -hmm. not going to stink. Mm -mm. Um, now, we have a litter box that doesn't have a lid on it, so I'm going to have to get one that does because she's a scratcher. Oh, she scratches the stuff off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's kind we of got cool. those puppy pads, and I have those big puppy pads down. Remember puppy pads when you're training a dog? They're the blue like, and white ones? Yeah, those big square ones. Yeah. Yeah. And so we put that down and then put the, the kitty litter bin on top of it. And so it, when it, you know, sprinkles it out, it's not on your floor. I put ours on top of a rug. There you go. But see, eventually you have to wash that rug. Yep. We just throw the poop pads away or whatever you call those doggy pads. I'm trying to be more conscientious in the stuff that we use. She's, she's next going to be into eco things. I've always been into eco things. It's my husband's that haven't been. Oh, yeah. Except right. for, apparently, my ex-husband now is into eco things. And... so much fun. Why are you letting her eat a fruit roll-up? She's calling it a fruit roll-up, but it had three ingredients. Pureed fruit, honey. gelatin, and honey. It was not bad for her. So he comes here on Saturday afternoons and visits Connor over here. Mm -hmm. And he said to me one day, there was something, and he said, oh, where's, uh, where's your, um, like your recycle bin? And I said, in the coat closet. He said, because I don't have room in the kitchen. I have a small house. So, you know, it's just cardboard and whatever. Well, then they changed the rules here. and I still don't know what we can put in and what we can't. Right. So we put cardboard in. but Because she lives in a townhouse association, so yeah, there so are I rules. Know. And um, so anyway, and he said something to me about, I said, oh, just throw it in the, in the trash. I know. Wrong thing to say because he said mm -hmm. something about it like, um, you know, this is not good for the world or something. And I thought, oh my God, if you knew all the things that I've thrown in the trash over 72 years, let me tell you, you know, I'm sorry, but we didn't always know about it. But living on the farm, we also polluted the air instead because we had those 55 gallon drums mm -hmm. and we took our junk out there that we wanted to throw away newspapers or whatever and put them in there and everything got burned you could see that smoke going forever well and i don't really think he has a foot to stand on because for three years he was bringing his garbage and his recycling to my house and putting it in my bins <laughs> well there is that because he lives um rurally and they don't have great service um, so he would have to take it to, like, a dump? He has, we've been up there. He has the most beautiful view. He really does. From his house. His mm -hmm. house is kind of like, like... What's it called? Santan Valley View? I don't know. It's like, he can see forever. Yeah. Beautiful view. Mm -hmm. And he has a fireplace in the living room that he can um, start a fire in it and it heats the entire house. What's that called? It's called a fireplace in his living room. It's called, it's an old Arizona house that has no heat or air conditioning. Yeah. How so does, there how is... How people live in the olden days? Well, a lot of them, you know, that was the deal. You didn't heat your bedrooms. You had extra quilts on your bed. You know, it's... Well, that would He'd be... He'd have heat in his living room, and that'd be about it. That would be Minnesota, because when I grew up on the farm, the kids slept upstairs. We had our bedrooms. There was no heat. There was one... It's called a transom. It's about this big by this big, and it's like a like a 
floor grate, little teeny thing, and that would go up in the boys' bedroom. Mm -hmm. It was under a bed because mm -hmm. the, of the way their beds had to be. Nobody got any heat up there. I never had heat in my bedroom. We never had fans. We only had one that was in the window in the dining room, so it would pull the cool air in mm -hmm. across my mom and dad's bed. So we didn't care. Yeah, he's not a bad guy. We're not no, trying to say isn't. that. He's just like most people, has his own quirks. Mm -hmm. But he also can fix cars. Yes, he's a very good mechanic, and right. he's a very good teacher. He was a teacher for many years. He uh, recently he's, stopped. He's a good fabricator, and uh, mm -hmm. and I didn't quite understand what that was that he was he does. But um, Ed said to me one day, "All right." If you needed a part added on to something and you can't buy it, but you know that this is what you need for whatever the project is, um, you take it to a, a fabricator and you say, I need this to go to like this. Mm -hmm. And he said, it, they have this engineering mind mm -hmm. and so they can do that. So, yeah. Or fabricate. If fabricate means to make. To make. Yeah. So they make like. Part. Car parts that are no longer made and you can't find yeah. if you need something, whatever. Yeah. Um, he is a nice guy, but yeah, he he's he's peculiar. In the same way that my son will be someday, so we all have to remind ourselves of that. And we, as you said, we all have our quirks. Yes. In my household, we just call it personality. Everybody's got personality. personality, and some days we like it and some days we don't. Um, Have you noticed the change in Prue in the last just two weeks? Two, three weeks? Yes. All of a sudden, there's something different about her. And she was here. Well, she I'll did say the, something to her, and she'll be like, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And she's very much into being a team. We're going to be a team now. We're going to make this, at, but we're going to be a team, but I'm going to be boss. Where do we think she got that from? You know what we're going to make for Grandpa today? We're going to make him a chocolate cake, and then we're going to put chocolate frosting on top, and then we're going to put chocolate chips on the top, and then we're going to put sprinkles on the top, rainbow sprinkles. She's really creative, too. But you know what? This is the one who used to watch Julia Child when you were little. She didn't care about the cartoons. She didn't want to watch it. She wanted to watch Julia Child. And you or the Frugal you would talk, Gourmet. Or the, remember Graham Kerr? The Frugal no, Gourmet. that's not his name. It wasn't Graham Kerr. The Frugal Gourmet was Jeff Smith out of Seattle. Oh, yeah. What was what was um, Graham Kerr? I don't remember him at all. Oh, you used to watch him all the time, and his wife's name was Tina. And he, Write in and tell her what that is, what that old show was. Anyway, she would watch all the cooking shows, and then she'd be up in the kitchen, little teeny kitchen that we had. And she'd be up in the kitchen. Well, I'm going to make this. I'm going to make that. And you use that same voice, and it would crack me up, and I'd say, sure, honey. Sure. You know, it's the way that girls... Maybe learn, and boys, too, how to cook. You know, she, could, Connor couldn't care less. Tell me why. He knows how to make his rice. And he, he, he knows how to make uh, microwave popcorn. And microwave rice. He's fine. He'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. She's going to be the little cook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Won't that be nice? I thought it was nice to have a daughter who liked to cook. Your sister used to come over and say, oh, does it have pine nuts in it? Do we have to eat one more thing with pine nuts? Love pine I nuts. love pine nuts. Mm -hmm. Why are they so expensive? Makes no sense. I don't know. No, I don't know. All right, so we are not doing yarny things. So let's wrap this yeah. hour-long fiasco up. But look at this. This is what I wanted. It's... Okay, don't take it off I'm the not, needles. I'm not, I'm not, I'm break not. break it. Yeah, it's a little bit wider. That's what I wanted. It's a little bit looser. It's barely looser, but part of that is because you're knitting very tightly. Yeah. 
I don't know how yet to yet not take it. But isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for helping me with this. Yep, you're welcome. Oh, but you got this stuck in here. Wait, so just pull it out. Okay. Okay. Look with your heart first. Thank you very much. Lisa Hope, hop. Send us your address. <laughs>